Hello, everyone, and welcome to Biohackers Lab. I'm your host, Gary Kerwin, and on today's episode, I have Chris Borez. Chris is the owner of SES Research and the founder of My Vital C, the largest manufacturer of ESS60 in the world. And today we're going to be talking about C60. Chris, thanks for coming on for an episode. Gary, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be on your podcast. I was listening to some of your o- older podcasts and, and was excited that you've already kind of covered some of the things that I think kind of fold into the subject of uh, kind of this My Vital C. Yeah, great. And I mean, carbon 60 or C60 is a supplement I have not talked about before on the show. And it's something I see in the biohacking forums quite a bit of people discussing the pros and cons of it, or should I, shouldn't I? So I'm glad I've got you on today to actually talk all about it, just to introduce us. So yeah, my first- we can like start from the beginning and maybe, maybe even not get to the end today. <laughs> <laughs> so my first question for you is, so for someone who's never heard of this supplement, what is it? What is C60? So um, carbon 60, and, and there's a lot to this, but carbon 60 is really 60 carbon atoms in one molecule. Um, and the best way to describe it so people can get a visual of what it is, if you imagine we call them a soccer ball, you call them a football. If we imagine a, a soccer ball, the lines on the soccer ball represent the bonds between the carbon atom, atoms. So you have this spherical molecule of 60 carbon atoms called carbon 60. Uh, it's kind of affectionately known as buckyball. Uh, it was discovered in 1985 at Rice University by Professor Smalley, Professor Curl, and Professor Croto. Uh, those three professors went on to win the Nobel Prize for that discovery because the scientific community obviously recognized how important this discovery would be. Prior to the discovery of C60, there were only two forms of carbon that you're kind of aware of. One is diamond, the other is graphite, and now there's a whole gamut of molecules called fullerenes. The most abundant of them is C60, and that's kind of affectionately called buckyballs. They get the whole the name fullerene comes from a guy by the name of Buckminster Fuller, who kind of pushed to the forefront the geodesic dome, which has the same shape as that kind of affectionately known buckyball. Okay. So these C60s then, how does that, what you've just explained there, how does that translate into a supplement that people are getting excited about? Yeah. So um, I, so maybe it's worth telling a little bit of the story. When we first started the company way back in 1991, uh, people would kind of ask that question, but it wasn't related to supplements yet. And they would, they were, you know, my friends and family would say, hey, what's this buckyball good for? Like, and the joke at the time was that it's actually really good for funding, <laughs> because if you wanted to get funded, uh, a lot of papers were being written on this either soon to be or recently crowned, you know, a Nobel Prize winning uh, material. And so a lot of people got funding. What it was is uh, carbon 60 is harder than a diamond to actually turn into a diamond. It's got six fold symmetry. Uh, so it's really strong. It has the ability to attract and release electrons. So we're all familiar with batteries and how on day one, our cell phone is just magical with its battery. And then it just keeps going downhill and downhill until we kind of need to buy a new one. Uh, That's because of degradation in the lithium in the battery. Uh, The buckyball isn't going to have that problem. And so that was what people did research on. Uh, There were some medical applications early on. They recognized, in fact, in a Petri dish, if you take fullerenes and and couple them in a a Petri dish with the AIDS virus, uh, there's one particular structure in the reproductive process of the AIDS virus that the buckyball would fit in and block. So, um, you know, there, that was back in the, in the early uh, kind of late, well, all of the nineties really, uh, starting in 91, um, the AIDS virus was you know, really on its first kind of coming to awareness and, and being a big deal in, in mainstream. So that was kind of an exciting announcement. Also, it's large enough for any atom on the periodic chart to fit inside of it. And so there's even a new symbol in chemistry because of this caged buckyball uh, shape. And that's the at symbol. We're familiar with it from uh, email. And so if you have lanthanum at C60, what you have is lanthanum trapped inside of C60. It's not covalently bonded. It's not ionically bonded. It's just, you know, it's a pretty amazing material. Uh, I like to say that it performs as good or better than the current best material in almost every application. The, the reason that it's not as ubiquitous as they're anticipated, that's why they won the Nobel Prize, uh, is because it's very expensive. In fact, when we started the company, one gram of C60 was selling for $6,000. Wow. 
<laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of the reason we ended up starting the company. Uh, my business par- partner was working at the Texas Center for Superconductivity and actually separating C- the fullerenes into their individual components. So isolating C60, isolating C70. Uh, and uh, Professor Paul Chu, who's pretty famous in superconductivity area, uh, came in and said, hey, you guys are young. This material is $6,000 a gram. You should go form a company. And my business partner was from an entrepreneurial background. And so I jumped right in and, and we started it. They brought me in to design it. Uh, and then we were our, our the first company to deliver commercial quantities of carbon nanomaterials on, that, that remains. One company beat us, but they actually didn't even last six months. So we're, we're that first company. Um, so you asked, like, why are we here talking about supplements, right? So you fast forward, uh, started set manufacturing and selling in 1991, selling into different research. Into, if, it, if it's a research institution that you've heard of, we've sold them fullerenes. Um, and, and in 2012, again, they knew this was a really important discovery. They knew the material was going to be really important. And they assumed it was going to be toxic like benzene. I don't know if you're familiar with benzene and how important benzene is in kind of modern society. Mm, in, I mean, in what way? So benzene, it's a, what is it? It's a six sided ring of carbon, which has car- hydrogens on the outside. But if you pop off a hydrogen and you add components to it, that's the basis of most medicines and all, almost all plastics. So if we just say the word, the basis of most medicines and most plastics, you get a sense of how important the benzene ring is. Benzene on its own, so when it has all of those hydrogens attached to it, is a liquid, and it's actually not only, uh, it's toxic and carcinogenic. So they assumed this buckyball would be like a 3D version of benzene. That's one of the reasons they won the Nobel Prize, because they're like, okay, if benzene, a 2D version is, is really important to our society, massively important. Um, then this 3D version will eventually get there. Uh, so they assumed that that buckyball would be toxic. So they did this toxicity, uh, toxicity study in 2012 uh, at the University of Paris. And in this case, they gave the rats water. Uh, they gave the rats olive oil. And now I'm going to make kind of this demarcation between C60 and ESS60. Because C60 is really for industrial applications. Uh, and when it's improperly processed, there's peer-reviewed published research that shows C60 to be harmless. Uh, When you take C60 and you process it properly, uh, then you end up with what we call ESS60, uh, and that's safer for human consumption. So again, they go back, they give these rats water, olive oil, and olive oil with ESS60 in it. Uh, And again, they thought it would be toxic. Instead of being toxic, the rats that they give this MyVital C formula to lived 90% longer than the control group. Wow. So that's, yeah, that's worth pausing at because that's the single longest longevity result in an experiment ever on mammals. Uh, it's peer reviewed. It's published. These rats live 90% longer. Not only did they live 90% longer, uh, a typical, it was a Worcester rat. So a typical Worcester rat will die at 32 months uh, and will have a known amount of tumors. And those tumors are actually uh, the, the amount of tumor material that they have in their bodies is proportional to the amount of time they live. So they live longer, they have more tumors in their body. Uh, even though these rats that were given the ESS-60 in olive oil lived 90% longer, they all died tumor-free. Now, this is, you know, this is in line or on par with, okay, they live 90% longer. That's an amazing result. They live tumor-free. They're, they're, you know, you're scratching your head because they're Worcester rats and they live tumor-free. It's really important at this point to say, because as soon as you say tumor free, people start thinking, oh, cure for cancer. That is, you got to be really careful when you talk about that, because there's a huge difference in treating a cancer that has uh, (coughs) metastasized and a cancer and preventing cancer, right? So we know exercise and good sleep and good food can prevent cancer. Those are well known, well documented things. And then once you, if you do end up with cancer, like curing it is a totally different animal. But it's still important to say, these rats live 90% longer. They live to 62 months. Kudos to the researchers for extending the research, um, you know, two and a half years past what the original research was supposed to be. And then those rats died tumor free. So, and you said this was back in 2012 or so when the study came through? Yes, sir. That's exactly when it came out. Yeah. And so since then, I mean, did that revolutionize anything? Because, to, I mean, that's a dramatic <laughs> difference then in the longevity science studies, right? 
Yes. So uh, the current best prior to this study, the best way to live longer, uh, the best research researched and result way to live longer was uh, a calorie restriction. So starve yourself. I describe it as starve yourself almost half to death, and you can get about a thirty up to a thirty percent increase in your life. Many people are not signing up for that plan <laughs> in order to live longer. Uh, and so now, yes, ESS 60 in olive oil is the current best researched result way, right? So it's the result that's the longest related to, to longevity uh, uh, that's available in peer reviewed published research. Um, which brings me like, I'm kind of, when I come on the podcast, I'm also asking your audience if they're aware of any other research. Of course, we're looking for peer reviewed and published that's on mammals that has a longer extension of life than 90%. I'm unaware of it, and I would love for your audience members to kind of reach out to me and, and let me know about that. Uh, I actually have kind of two quests, but I'm sure we'll get to the other one here in a little bit. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned there about C, there's a difference between C60 and ESS60, but they're both C60, are they? Yeah, at the end of the day, they are both C60. It's One of the ways that you might want to look at it is if you've got a diamond with an inclusion, right? It's still a diamond, but the inclusion is a problem. Uh, you got C60, right, and it's improperly processed, then you can have a problem because when we say improperly processed, it typically has solvents associated with it. And as we know, solvents, entering solvents into our body are bad. And, and those solvents are a necessary part. Our C60 actually goes through a solvent process because in order to isolate good concentrations of C60 and C70, you need to use what's, go well, from the other components, so C70, C84, C76. Um, in order to isolate those, you've got to use chromato chromatographic processes uh, that do use solvents. So you end up with a very high purity of C60 in solution, and you've got to get rid of those solvents. And then it's not just typically getting rid of solvents in, in, a, in a lab means using a rotavap piece of equipment and boiling off the solvents. You've actually got to go through more steps to make sure you get as much of those solvents out uh, as as possible as 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 possible in a labor in a laboratory. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the so just so if anyone gets confused between the two, to me it sounds like um, a, a consumer, a human, is looking for ESS sixty because that's a purer form of C sixty without solvents in it or Absolutely. very minimal solvents, if any. That's a great. That's a great way to put it. Yeah. Okay. And then another thing I saw with this, um, and I think you mentioned it in that uh, study, is that it's not just on its own. It has to come with a medium. And that medium in this case was olive oil. Yes. Yeah. So um, it turns out that the powder, so if you just take ESS 60 powder, it's a black powder. You can actually ingest it. You'll just excrete it uh, because it's not that it's not water soluble. So it's not very bioavailable. When you dissolve it in oil, and we actually sell olive oil, MCT oil, avocado oil, and I'll talk about the differences there because there's significant differences. Let's just say if you dissolve it in olive oil, now it, when things are in solution, you're down to a monomolecular C60, and when you ingest that, uh, it's significantly more bioavailable. Okay. So, um, but in, in this case here, um, it, do you think olive oil, why, why did they choose olive oil? Do you think it was just because it's a common medium or... Um, is olive oil, is there something magical about that monounsaturated fat? Well, um, so I don't know exactly why they chose olive oil. It's certainly a really good and healthy oil. It's kind of part of the Mediterranean diet. Um, the study was out of Paris, so maybe they just had some lying around and said, let's use this particular uh, batch of olive oil instead of either a coconut or an MCT. Obviously, coconut can solidify, so that could be more problematic getting the rats to take it. Um, and then, you know, why they didn't use avocado. What's one thing that's really important to note, though, in this research, again, rats given water, rats given olive oil, and rats given olive oil with ESS-60. The rats who are given olive oil all lived 30% longer than the control group. So they had an equal result to calorie restriction by just giving these rats, uh, a, you know, additional doses of olive oil that a typical rat wouldn't take. So... I would say to your audience, you know, some people, you know, it's mostly biohackers at this point are taking our product, but we've got tens of thousands of customers. Um, if you're if you're apprehensive about the product in any way, I understand I'm as skeptical as the next person. Uh, I would implore you to, to take more olive oil, like whatever you're doing, 
uh, take more of it. I was recently on Dr. Gundry's podcast, and one of the things that he says is the purpose of eating and the purpose of food is to get more olive oil into your system. Okay, so he's a big fan of olive oil. Yes. <laughs> okay, so that's interesting. So potentially there's a, a synergistic effect of adding olive oil to this compound um, to ingest, and maybe that's what credits, as you said, such a big increase in, in lifespan in these animals. Some of it. And one thing that's important to note, and, and we do sell uh, um, ESS-60 and MCT oil, we sell it in avocado oil, is that significantly less of the ESS-60 goes into uh, avocado oil or goes into MCT. So you can get about, and it's not much, but you can get about 0.8 milligrams per milliliter uh, into an olive oil. So that's 0.8. You can only get about 0.35 milligrams into uh, a milliliter of MCT oil. And there's companies that sell, uh, you know, C60 or whatever in MCT oil. You gotta be careful because they're selling it and they're kind of selling it as equivalent to olive oil. In reality, it's not even close to equivalence of olive oil. Uh, olive oil really is the, the best oil for dissolving uh, ESS-60 in it at this point. And then avocado is a lot closer. It's at about 0.65. So you've got olive oil at 0.8, You've got MCT at 0.35. I guess I could have put those in numerical order. Uh, and, and avocado at a 0.65. And that's milligrams per milliliter. Okay. And then dosage-wise, what is is there a, a spectrum of dosages here that someone, if they want to just take this for different reasons, or is there really just one dosage? You know, you don't even play with dosages. Well, so we really don't know uh, what the perfect dose is. And, and if there's a variability in dosing for, like if you're trying to manage some particular health challenge, uh, if there's different doses. What's, what's interesting is, uh, and this is quite typical, when you do a rat study, you eventually take those to humans and you don't do a per kilogram, like how much the rat weighs and how much you gave them versus how much a human weighs and how much you give them. If that, if you use that number, it would actually, one dose would be a full cup of olive oil with ESS-60 in it. Not too many people can get a full cup of olive oil down, maybe even in a day, right? Uh, and certainly it's gonna uh, adjust your, your, your system, <laughs> if, you, if you know what I mean. Um, so there is actually something that's called an allometric calculation, which takes into account the, um, uh, uh, the metabolism of the different animals. Uh, and I'm, I'm I, one of my background, my degrees in mechanical engineering. So I think very engineering. And I love it when you say, if you take the surface area of a rat and then you take the surface area of a human, those numbers can be used to create this allometric calculation. So I did those calculations uh, and we ended up with about five milliliters, which is about one teaspoon uh, per day. Uh, a number of our clients are are really double dosing. So they're actually saturating in the original rat study. Uh, those rats were given a daily dose for the first week. Uh, I think it was first two weeks. And then those doses were every other day and then every other week. And then um, once every two weeks. Uh, also really interesting when we're talking about dosing with those original rats. Uh, again, a typical Worcester rat lives about 32 months. They None of the rats received their first dose until they were 10 months old. So about one third of the way through their life, which you know will make anybody who's thinking about taking the product feel good if they're right at that one third point. <laughs> um, and then they only gave rats dosage until month 17. So it was only seven months of the 32 or ultimately 62 months of life that they gave these rats uh, ESS 60. And even with that short time frame, and you know not starting from day one those rats live 90% longer and tumor free. That's so interesting to think. So just even a short period of exposure in their life had a profound change to the outcome of their lives. Yes. Wow. Now, don't tell anyone, but you may only need one teaspoon for your life. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't think that's true, but, <laughs> and but it fits in the realm of possibility. Yeah, I mean, as you said, then, I mean, who knows what the dosage is? Like, do you, maybe you just need one teaspoon or you could need six months worth and that's you actually set for a period of time. Uh, I, it would be interesting to, I mean, does anyone have a hypothesis why that happened? Is it, is it 
that it changed the function of the mitochondria forever in these rats or what, what was going on there? So, so of the, and, and the scientific community is looking at a lot of, of uh, to, to try and understand what might have caused this extension of life. We're actually in the process, we're in the first stages in the process of investing to recreate that original study. Uh, you know, the scientific process is have a th- hypothesis, have a result, and then recreate that result. Nobody to date has recreated that result, um, uh, mostly because it's expensive. Uh, so we're investing in uh, the research in order to recreate that original result. It might not surprise you to hear that we are not going to stop dosing the rats at month 17, because who knows what might have happened had you continued to dose the rats. You know, maybe they would have lived beyond 62 months. <laughs> Interesting, even the 62 month was, uh, was cut short. Basically, there were two rats remaining in the study, the ones that were given uh, the My Battle C formulation. One of them died, and they were like two years past the lifespan of the study, right? Think about it. If it's a toxicity study and all of the rats that were given the, mo- the, the molecule that you assumed would be toxic are alive and all of your control group is dead, you're really done with your toxicity study because it's clearly not toxic, right? <laughs> Taking it ha- caused them to outlive. But they ran that for another 30 months. That's, pr- that's pretty impressive. And then at the end, you know, one of the two remaining rats died and they euthanized the last one and did whatever autopsies that they needed to do on it. And, and that's where they ended up in, in that result. But our intent is not to stop dosing the rats at month 17. Um, and, and part of that is because uh, the reason they stopped dosing is they were ga- what's called gavaging the rats, which is actually putting a tube to force them to consume the oil. It wasn't a large amount for a rat, but it was a large, you know, it was a large amount. And they wanted to have controls to make sure the rats were consuming it. We have a good understanding that rats will like the olive oil. We do know that, um, as do my pets, actually, my dogs and my cats like it. Um, So we know that we'll be able to introduce the olive oil uh, just in their food, and we can have good control over their food and the amount of olive oil with the SS60 that they're getting in it. And we will dose longer than 17 months. So right now, with all the time that the product's been out there in, in the research field, there's no studies on toxicity. Nothing's found it to be toxic thus far. Nothing. No. The the things that and the only caveat to add to that is anything that ever shows C60 to be toxic um, is because it's in my opinion it's C60 and it's not properly processed. Uh, and there's two things that you can do. One, you can just not properly take care of the solvents, and then two, you can actually uh, there's the research on you can add things to the exterior of the buckyball in order to make it water soluble. The results with water soluble C60 are profoundly negative. uh, And so I would never put water soluble C60 in my body. So those are the types of processing that I'm talking about. um, You know, that, that I lend me to say, Hey, don't mess with C60 for industrial applications. If you want it, if you're going to put it in your body or your pet's body or a rat's body, um, then use ESS60, which is safer for, for consumption. And with all the, um, the products out there, do they label this properly to say this product contains only ESS60 or oh. what's going on out there with it? Because I'm sure there's, there's other manufacturers or producers or something with this, are there? Are there? Well, we're the largest manufacturer and, and like I said, the, the oldest manufacturer of carbon nanomaterials and the largest manufacturer and distributor of ESS60 on the planet. So um, a lot of people buy their raw materials from us. Uh, we've really kind of shifted this to ESS60 for two reasons. One, because again, um, there are people who are uh, coming into an industry, they don't know exactly what they're doing. I mean, we're in a unique position because for most of the history of the company, we were selling our products to professors who had research equipment to confirm the quality of what we were selling to them, right? The average consumer doesn't have the equipment, you know, you happen to have an HPLC, <laughs> right? The average consumer doesn't have the equipment uh, to be able to test these things. So they're, they're really wholly dependent on what they're doing. Well, a lot of the manufacturers that are in this business don't even have the equipment to test the materials that they might buy. And so uh, I'm very leery. Back in, in mid-2018, uh, we, I, I, we kind of facetiously say we made a mistake and we grew our olive oil sales so much that we had to keep a, almost all of our C60 production so we could turn it into ESS60 and put it in oil. 
And as the largest manufacturer of C60, um, the industry like was clamoring for new product. Um, it's a shame that we had to do that. It, it's kind of a shame that we weren't prepared for it. We are now, we've you know, ramped up our manufacturing processes. But in the middle of that, we decided to look around the world and see if there was a source that we might be able to just buy and resell from. And there are manufacturers in Russia, there's manufacturers in China. Uh, we were leery from the beginning in China just because they have a history of, uh, of, of not having good quality control. And then when we finally got the test samples from there, uh, we weren't happy with it. And, and really, it cost us money because we weren't able to sell products to people who were clamoring for it. Uh, but it was the wisest thing uh, I think we did in terms of making sure those people were buying from us uh, are, are buying a safe product for, for, for whatever they're doing with it, if they're mixing it in oil and then selling it. So, um, and the other reason we really have kind of gone down the path of ESS60, we're such a new industry. Um, it's probably a 10 to $13 million industry. Um, and there's already fraud. Like there's one gentleman, I did a video. I'm not, I, I don't believe in going negative. Uh, against other vendors at all. I think that's usually how you destroy the whole industry. Uh, it's not how you I say, you know, get more sales for yourself by saying everyone else is bad. I'd rather like, hey, encourage and have, con and I have conversations with other um, manufacturers and like, hey, let's do this a little bit better. Let's strive to do this better. There's one guy who's in the industry uh, who sells a product, it's a sunfl sunflower seed oil. I did a video, it literally has no C60 in it. And that's one of the reasons I was comfortable doing the video is because I don't believe in going negative within my industry. But here's a guy who is actually not even he's selling into my industry, but he isn't actually in my industry, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So that's why ESS 60 is about keeping the consumer safe. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I've spoken to other supplement companies here and what I've enjoyed is is speaking with brands who are transparent and actually do look out for the consumer because yeah, the consumer can only do so much research that there has to be a level of trust that, you know, the manufacturer um, is actually doing a proper job yeah, uh, and delivering a, a product that states what it is on the label is actually what's on the label in the yeah. product. Yeah. No, that, that's really important. And we have the equipment and the knowledge. I mean, we're probably some of the best, fullerene testers on the planet because we've been testing and measuring and looking at it. It dissolved in oils and all sorts of things since 1991. Uh, so, so we know what we make. We could, we could pr actually probably save money if we bought the material somewhere else because it's pretty labor, labor intensive to make, but then we just don't know exactly what's going into it. So we're, we're a very unique place because we manufacture the C60 here. We mix it in the oil here. We actually bottle and label, and we do all of that in-house here. Okay. And when we talk about olive oil too, you know, there's been a big scandal in the olive oil industry itself that you consumers are buying a bottle of olive oil, but it's not 100% olive oil. It's a mixture. In this case here, when we're talking about olive oil, are you also not falling into that trap of the olive oil trap? Well, we, we, so let's, let's, I'm going to, I believe in transparency. If, if we're getting built, it's not because we haven't identified, like, so we identify individual uh, orchards and purchase from individual orchards. Uh, so we get, we do as much research as we can. Um, I got to admit, we're, we're probably subject to that potentially. Um, but I think by going to the individual orchard, we're significantly less likely for that to be true. Like it, in, all, in all transparency, I don't think anybody can say, unless they're going to go do genetic testing, which is not a capability that we have. Um, and is, a, is, is expensive, you would have to do like genetic because 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 what what happens when you create olive oil fraud is you're actually putting like palm oil or something, some much less expensive oil and much less healthy oil in there. And so unless you're doing genetic testing to make sure there's no presence of palm oil, then you, you can't set you can't know for sure other than what is the due diligence that you've done on the orchard, the individual orchard that you're that you're working with. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we talked about toxicity and the, it sounds like the consumers sh shouldn't be too concerned about toxicity. Um, other than yeah. longevity being a big benefit, uh, what are, what, why, why would someone take this? Is there any short term gains to be had from taking ESS 60? Yeah. Let, let me get the short term. Cause, cause you mentioned, you know, toxicity and is it safe? And I just want, you know, and I mentioned that I'm, I'm as a suspicious or, uh, uh, as anybody who's out there, it, 
that study came out in 2012. And in the middle of 2013, we started getting phone calls, people asking us, how much in a dose? And although the literature, again, C60, you know, for industrial applications, but ESS60 properly processed, the research was very clear uh, that properly processed C60 is safe. Um, we still had our nanomaterial scientist hat, right? So those calls when they're coming in saying how much in a dose, our first response was no. <laughs> you put this in tires and paint and batteries and solar cells. You don't put this in the body. So in mid 2013, again, despite the literature, we added not for human consumption. It's just you know just being scientifically conservative. Um, we were mixing the oil and selling the oil. Uh, it was for research purposes only. So if you had a pet or a rat and you wanted to do the same research, we made that available to you. And then you fast forward to 2017, kind of late 2017, a guy with a really big YouTube following started talking about, he talks about Bitcoin and finance. Uh, he started talking about the benefits that he was getting and the industry kind of sold out, actually the industry sold out except for us because we're the largest manufacturer and distributor of the raw ingredient. Um, and really coming into 2018, we had to do a little bit of soul searching as carbon nanomaterial scientists. We're like, okay, uh, are, are we now supplement guys, right? Which is a very weird position for us to be in. I, I always feel like a supplement person gets there by two paths. One of them is somebody decides they want to be really wealthy and they decide they're going to go sell supplements. And I have no problem with somebody being wealthy. It's just not how I ended up here. Um, the other is somebody has some sort of health issue. I think most of the biohackers out there are either trying to optimize their health or are actually trying to solve some specific health problems that they have. And so people solve those problems with whatever kind of supplements that they've put together, and now they want to save the world. It, hopefully it doesn't surprise you. I have no problem with people saving the world, <laughs> but that's not how I ended up here. I've been selling materials since 91. They do a study in 2012. And now people are clamoring for it. So in, in the beginning of 2018, we actually asked ourselves two questions. The, the first is a moral question. Uh, am I comfortable selling it? I, I take it. My wife takes it. Everybody on our team here takes it. I'm comfortable selling it to you because I believe it's safe in the literature, in my opinion, says that it's safe. Uh, again, do your own research. Um, and then the other issue that we had to test, right, or understand, and here in the States is the FDA and the FTC and just got to make sure you're doing the right things by those organizations. So we are, and that's where, uh, where 2018 kind of kicked off. Then you asked about benefits people are getting. Almost all of 2018, I would answer the phone and some customer would give me a testimonial. And, and my response was like, I don't know what to do. Like, I don't know that, I, like, I believe you as a person calling into me and telling me these benefits that you're getting. I'm not even sure I believe it's my product. I mean, you're, you're clearly convinced, but uh, there's no research behind it, right? So I struggled in 2018, you know, because I'm, I'm as, um, there's another word, but as apprehensive or suspicious as anybody out there. And, and so it really took a long time for me to kind of settle in and, and start to kind of believe that these testimonials that are coming in are real. And let me share uh, just a couple with you. Before I share any testimonials, it re it's really important. You know, the FDA has not evaluated our product. It's not intended to treat, diagnose, or cure uh, any any disease uh, or illness. So just just know that um, the most consistent testimonial is better sleep, right? And you you I think you did two podcasts last year about sleep, mm -hmm. right? And one of them was like how to get better sleep, and then you've like you have a do you have an aura ring? I've got an aura ring. Yeah. 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 So I'm actually currently doing a study uh, in contact with a scientist at Aura Ring. We've got our first uh, test subject, right? So Aura Ring has this vast amount. Everyone who has an Aura Ring, you have sleep data uh, prior to taking why you were not taking ESS 60. Uh, so we actually have our first test subject who started. He gave us 10 days of pre My Vital Seed data and has now started his first day. Uh, really, his first night's sleep was last night on my vital seat, uh, you know, really cursory. He did say he, the, the data is a little bit different, but you know, it's day one. Um, so we're working on this. That's the most consistent testimonial. It comes in a couple of different forms. Uh, I've got a business coach who says that for 50 years, he needed an alarm clock to wake up. And since he's been on the, my vital seat formulation, he wakes up before the alarm clock. I think it has an impact on jet lag. Uh, I know you're about to travel. 
I, uh, I was in LA, so that's a, just a two hour difference, nothing compared to what you're about to experience. <laughs> I've got a two hour difference. When I woke up in LA, I woke up at 620, which literally 620, looked at my watch at 620, which is the exact time, but two hours later than I normally wake up in Houston, right? It's 620. Um, when somebody says they wake up before the alarm clock, it's almost like it's allowing the brain to process more information and keep keep track of time or what does, I don't know exactly what that means. Um, there are some people that I've met or like, I just tell myself I need to wake up at five and I wake up at five. Uh, I was never that person. <laughs> not a, not a, I, I used to snooze a lot. Um, so, so to wake up in a time zone that's two hours different at the exact right time, I, it clearly has some impact. I don't know if you've read the book, Why We Sleep mm-hmm. by, by, by Walker. I think it's Michael Walker. Um, really amazing book. I highly recommend it. Uh, basically it's the scariest book related to sleep. This is how they could bill it. The scariest book related to sleep you'll ever read. Cause what it does is it goes in and talks about when you don't get this sleep, what's the decrease in your cognitive function? When you don't get this sleep, how does it affect your cardio health? Uh, how does it affect your actually blood sugar, your ability to process insulin a couple of nights without sleep and you actually uh, start car- carrying the, the the markers for diabetes. Um, it's really scary book. And in that book, they talk a, a couple of things they make point. One is good sleep is incredible for your mental, emotional, uh, and physical well-being. I think we all kind of know that and, and we kind of do, hey, sleep is really important unless you have something else that you need to do. And then, you know, it's not that important. If you read this book, you'll probably shift uh, and understand that sleep is that important. In that book, they talk about the $2 billion sleep aid industry. Uh, I don't know if you know kind of any history, but what they share in the book is all of these drugs, which you take right before you go to sleep, they knock you out, right? So they release the chemical pressure to desire sleep. So you wake up thinking that you don't need sleep or feeling that you don't need sleep because that chemical pressure has been released. But what they don't do is they don't allow you to get in REM and REM sleep. So in REM is a, is a type of sleep that, they'll t- that they talk about in the book. Our product is totally different. You don't take it right before you go to sleep. In fact, some people will say it will keep you up uh, if you take it right before sleep. Most of our clients take the product first thing in the morning. I take it. I actually like the MCT. I mix it in my coffee. So I, I put about five mils of MCT in my coffee, kind of have a bulletproof experience with my coffee. Um, and then I take a, actually I take a, a full teaspoon and a half uh, of the olive oil. And that's every day. Um, so they take the product in the mor- morning as part of their routine. And then they report mental focus, mental acuity during the day, and then better sleep that night. So it's fundamentally different, obviously, than just knocking yourself out uh, and getting better sleep. So that's, that's the most uh, uh, consistent testimonial. That's interesting. Yeah. So I've got, I've got more. I just, uh, I, I, I went on for a long time just in case you had any questions. And Well, yeah. I mean, especially the um, sleep, sleep um, quality is, is a big issue for a lot of adults. I think um, just knowing that they actually or feeling that they had a good night's sleep here and people do look for multiple different ways to improve their deep. I see it all the time in the aura ring forums. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if I've ever heard, come across people talking about taking or trialing out ESS 60 as a way to test. Does that give you a better quality sleep? You're about to, I, I literally, um, last week, there's three, there's the, the big aura ring Facebook group. You're talking about the Facebook group yeah. Mm. is aura ring dash group. I think it's all together. Aura ring is all together. And then dash group. Um, I've approached a couple of people individually, somebody who's posted, I've kind of pulled off a message on the side and, hey, send them, hey, would you be willing to do this? Uh, just today, I sent a note directly to, uh, I, last week, I sent a note to one of the um, administrators of the forum, of the group, um, and he hasn't responded. So I sent that same note to two, to the other two administrators, just asking permission, because, you know, you go into these groups, I don't want to kind of, I'm not, it's not, of course, I would like everyone to buy my product. But this is about, hey, I'm going to give you a couple of free bottles. Um, I just need you to give me 10 days of data prior and then 10 days of data after. So you'll see that on the forums, I hope, really soon, like maybe tomorrow, certainly, certainly I hope by the end of the week. 
Yeah, that's. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing that then. Um, so I'm just. And do you do you suspect that it would be even within the first dose? It's not that you have to dose for seven days or fourteen days before you see any benefit. We definitely get. We definitely run the spectrum, right? So we get clients. Um, one one of my favorite testimonials. Uh, a guy who really we're, we're, we're a warehouse, right? We got our offices here and we're a warehouse. We're not really a, a retail location, but we will do will call if you happen to be in Houston. So a guy came, I was working on a Sunday, a guy came, knocked on the door. It felt like really clandestine. I opened the door and he's like, do you have ESS 60? I'm like, yes, come in. <laughs> and then I had to figure out how to like run a charge because we don't have a cash register. So basically I had to take his credit card and run it on, on our website. Right. Um, he was in the, I, I was walking around the office and I noticed him up front and I was like, at the time we were running a special on three bottles and uh, uh, Cassandra up front, let me know that this was his third purchase. I was like, this is perfect. The guy's here. We're always looking for video testimonials. It's his third purchase. He's buying three bottles. Clearly he's felt something. And I asked him what he felt and he was like, well, I haven't really felt anything. And in my head, I'm thinking, well, that seems weird, but it's also true that again, if you're looking to live longer, there's no better research on the market. Like this is, this is it. This is the best thing. Um, but then there was a kind of a moment of hesitation and he gestured towards his knuckles and he goes, does it help, you know, does it help with arthritis? And I go, well, you know, the FDA hasn't evaluated it, but we're certainly getting reports from our clients uh, that it's helping with their arthritis. And he goes, oh, well, then it's, you know, healed my arthritis. And I used to have this click, click, click in my knee and that noise is gone. And oh, uh, by the way, I'm now jog. I hadn't jogged for a couple of years. I'm now about to go on my, I don't know, eighth or 10th jog. So I'm jogging again. And I think it's because of the product. And in my head, I'm like, well, it's too bad you're not feeling anything. Uh, and then he wrapped up and he said, look, this is really important to share. I feel less stress at work. And he goes, but let me be, let me be clear. It's the same job. It's the same people. It's the same stress, but I feel less stress at work. And I was like, well, that's, that's phenomenal, right? That's, that's, it. so what the point of, of that story to your question is some people have to be queried. We're actually working on like a checklist that we sent out with a product going, you know, what are, have you noticed on a scale of one to 10 or how are you here? Because sometimes, you know, in the biohacker community, it's a lot less frequent. People are a lot more aware of what's going on in their body. That's the whole reason they're biohackers, right? Um, but when you get into people who aren't biohackers, they kind of need a checklist of what they might expect and what they might benefit and what, what they can do with that. So um, it can be pretty subtle. On the other end of it, I've got, there's two athletes at my office. Uh, one plays indoor soccer. The next day after his first dose, he said he went from 10 minutes on. I don't know if you know about in, indoor soccer. It's mm -hmm. entirely sprinting. There's no jogging. There's no walking. You're just sprinting. And you usually kind of come in and go out pretty quickly. After his first dose, the next day, his on-pitch time went from 10 minutes to 20 minutes. That's insane. Uh, the other uh, individual is a, is a former professional football player, and his wife is a personal trainer. They were training the next day after a dose, and they both noticed the difference in them. In, in him, she wasn't dosing, uh, but in him, uh, you know, for, for the performance that he was delivering that day. And I actually have one really long audio testimonial with a, a significant amount of expletives because the guy's trying to figure out what the, what the, uh, is in this stuff because of, of his routine. And he's like this super hyper focused. He was like, it was a Friday. And he said, at this point, it's the end of the week. Normally I'm at seven, you know, 72% of my typical routine. I'm now at 95 of my routine and I'm feeling great. Like what's actually in this particular product. And, uh, and, and so, yeah, those are the, the, it runs the gamut. Some people need more time. Uh, some people get almost, you know, instant result. Just from one teaspoon. Yes. Yeah. That, I think that it sounds interesting, you know, um, from an experiment, experimentation point of view, because I always look at, I mean, I haven't taken the product myself, but um, risk benefit we'll, we'll ratio. Fix that. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, that risk benefit ratio and going, you know, what's the risk if I experiment with this versus, you know, what are the potential benefits from this? And yeah, I'm particularly in this game just to live a, a long, healthy life or a good, healthy life until the day I die. I don't know when that's going to occur, but um, yeah, I think most people are like that. It's not just a, a quick hack. It, it, some people are, do want that massive improvement instantly for something, but as long as you know, you're ingesting something that should be good for you, then yeah. You know, 
ult- that ultimately isn't going to harm you. Like that's 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 the thing. If it has a neutral or positive benefit, then I'm worth taking the risk for whatever the the potential, whatever the the pitched benefit is. Uh, just one piece to add to the sleep data. I think this is just really fascinating. Um, so so the guy's name is Benjamin, the scientist over at Aura Ring. And he gave me, a, for some reason, it came up in this conversation. I was like, oh, you probably have data of how people sleep after they drink, right? After they drink alcohol. He was like, yes, we do. And there's a very pronounced um, artifact on the results. So one of the, the graphs that uh, the Aura Ring provides, you'll, you'll be familiar with, is resting heart rate. And I don't know if you've looked at your data or if you even drink, but when you when you drink, your uh, resting heart rate actually starts higher and has a pretty slow, well, it's a pretty dramatic drift, but it starts high and drifts to the kind of average that you end up for your whole sleep. So it starts way up and then goes down and levels out. And so he gave me his non-drinking data, which was all level, and then his drinking data, which had this peak and was level. Um, I don't I don't have any non-My Vital C data yet because I actually don't want to go off of it. I have a busy month <laughs> and I'm apprehensive about going off the product during this month. Um, but I can tell you when I have drank, I don't have that slope going into the resting, uh, uh, resting heart rate. So already there's different statas. And again, we get this testimonial that, that people have been able to um, survive hangovers less painfully. Uh, who are who are on the product? Sounds like a wonder drug. Yeah. <laughs> so you can imagine. Think like you. If you're apprehensive, I haven't even told you one eighth of the testimonials that I have had to deal with in 2018. And again, people are like, you know, they mention things like, well, first off, just to mention arthritis, it affects so many people. Uh, Parkinson's, which is you know such a dramatic disease, and I'm like, I. I okay, right? I, I've got one lady who says her son used to be admitted to the hospital for mental illness, illness issues five times a year. Um, got him on the product in 2019. He didn't go all of 2019. Uh, people are talking about better better eyesight um, and improving like eye tears. I've got one one guy I have a lot of conversations with. Really interesting guy. He had some kind of deep eye surgery, and he says normally it's his eyes all black around it. And then the, you know, the white of the eye is all red and he went for his follow-up and the receptionist was like, well, wh- why are you here? Cause normally they can recognize why they're there. And he was like, I'm here for my follow-up. He was like, I don't think that's true. Right. Like his, his healing was so dramatic that he, that the receptionist and then the physician like didn't, it surprised them what state he was in. So the, like now, and if I keep telling you, your disbelief is going <laughs> to keep going down. So I should stop. <laughs> well, and again, I think that's what I'm reading in the, in the forums. It's just the spectrum. And then you, it, it, it does, it makes you wonder, like, can it be? I mean, I, I, I even know people are talking about using it for hair loss. And yep. it's just and, like, and the where, where does it back, stop? And the hair is growing back with color, right? So it's, it's more specific than like, oh, I think my hair is growing back. I have hair growing in spots that I haven't had hair in years. Uh, and it's coming back. It's not coming in gray. It's coming in blonde or black or whatever the, 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 the natural color is. Right. So, yeah, if I just said, hey, I'm here and I have a, a product that helps you grow your hair back, you'd already be suspicious. Right. Because but I'm saying it. I'm saying that my clients tell me their hair is growing back. My clients say it's helping with their inflammation. Now, now we do know, right? You, I think you asked this and I, I, I never got to it. Do we have an, any understanding of what the mechanism is? I don't think we necessarily know the understanding of how you stop dosing at month 17 and still live to month 62 when you're supposed to die at month 32. But the current thought processes in the medical community about aging are that it's an inflammation issue and that it's an oxidation issue. And it is definitely true uh, that the formulation ESS60 in olive oil, my vital C, is uh, is an antioxidant. Uh, some research has shown it to be 172 times more powerful than vitamin C, which is a nice number, but I'm not sure how relevant that is. Uh, and it's also an anti-inflammatory. Uh, so, so it's not surprising that you know something that seems that that research shows increase the lifespan of mammals by 90% is an antioxidant and an anti-inflammatory. Yeah. So how is ES, ESS60 being 
accepted by the longevity community because that's a massive community who are always looking to improve their telomeres and live longer. Is it is it being well accepted with by yeah. the researchers in that community? I think it is. I really haven't. Um, I haven't got. You know, there's there are, there are criticisms to all research, right? And that's the that's the scientific way. Very happy about that. Um, I haven't been in a forum where somebody really, really with significantly valid reasons to doubt the research um, was able to. I, you can always say, well, we need more research. Like this isn't enough research, and I would agree with you 100. Um, percent But no one's coming out and really saying this is all garbage research and there's nothing here to believe. You shouldn't be listening to it. I mean, you get that in YouTube forums and Facebook groups and things like that. Um, but then you just like, well, have you actually read the literature? And then they go away. Like they, they you know, it's, it's, it's all like, again, if I tell you I have this product that um, will help you grow hair, like you'll say, well, that's not true. Right. Cause we just kind of understand that that product doesn't exist. Well, maybe it does. And and our customers are reporting this. It's not what I'm selling it as, for sure. And when we're talking about the product too, it's just it. You have to ingest it by mouth. It's not a topical. It's not something you would rub on your skin or, or on a lesion somewhere. Well, I do. <laughs> so um, one of my distributors, uh, and we just sold it to her. It's not. We don't bill it as a topical. Uh, but one of my, I was on a phone call with one of our distributors, and she was like, "Look, Chris, I have to tell you." I spend an inordinate amount of money on skin serums and creams and lotions. I can't even tell my husband. I think she said she used a different credit card. <laughs> so her husband wouldn't know how much she spends. And this product was the best one that she's used. Now, again, I didn't tell her to even try that. But given that I'm now, I put it on my face. Um, and I did actually have something that I wasn't, I was eventually going to go to the dermatologist that was growing here. Um, and it, it's gone. So now I've got some stuff on my back. I'm putting it on my back to see uh, if it if it does anything there. Because there are people, yeah, who have reported that it's beneficial on the skin. Now, I there's really, re and I'm going to go, it's really cursory research that was only mentioned in a forum once way back in. It almost sounds like a lore, right? Um, that that, that uh, ESS-60 and olive oil when exposed to light and we don't know how much light, if it was like really high intense, like there's no, de it, it just turned it into a, a detrimental material. So my general practice is I put it on when I'm here at the office. Uh, I wouldn't put it on to go sunbathing. Like that's, that's not what I would do with it. Mm -hmm. I'm not too worried about that because uh, again, it's mostly almost hearsay the way it is. Uh, but, you know, I always err on the side of caution. Okay. And so that actually gets me thinking about storage wise. So um, is there any particular way that a consumer should store the product once they get it? No. In fact, what's kind of neat, I don't, know, I don't know if you can see this. This is one of our new dosing systems. Um, yes. So, you so got, it's like syringe or not syringe, little sachet. Ampules. Amp yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I would take it, but it's, it's late and I've had quite a few doses today. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, you just like tear off this, this little ampule, right? And then you've got uh -huh. one, you twist that off and you take it. I keep, I've got one sitting right here on my desk. This is another one that's actually open. That's what I use to put on my face. Ah, is, that a, is that a, and that's just a, a liquid oil then that's coming yeah, out of that? It's just an oil. It's, it, it, it's mostly olive oil because you can only get 0.8 milligrams per milliliter of ESS-60 in it. So it's, it's only olive oil. Actually, you know, I'm just, I don't want any, anybody who's watching this to go like, he didn't take it. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to stay up tonight. <laughs> so would that be a single dose you've just taken there that's one dose that's one teaspoon or five mils okay so yeah and then the cap's designed so that you can put it back on but i mean most of the time you're just going to use it and, and throw it away yeah um, i just saved this other one here so i can have something to, to put on my face okay interesting so yeah and i mean even there now potentially who knows how long you've maybe extended your life just from a single <laughs> just, dose or maybe I just added four days. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's really interesting because if you, if you take a human and you add 90% to their life, that gets them to like 152 years average. Right. So, so those people like it's, it's pretty, pretty crazy. I just finished a book, which is really kind of the premise is interesting. It wasn't the, the greatest book, but the premise was interesting, which is 
hey, with all this ability to man man manipulate genes, we may be approaching the horizon after which people don't die of natural causes anymore, right? And the point of the book was, how much would it suck to be that last person who dies of natural causes? Because there will be one who does, and then the next one doesn't. I mean, you may get hit by a bus, et cetera. Like, that's not natural causes. But work on living a healthy life so you can cross that finish line and be among the people who are, you know, who live forever. Yeah. Exactly. I think it's a really cool, it's a really cool concept. Uh -huh. So uh, we've had, I think, a, a really good conversation around this pro and it's got me thinking, as I said, I've come to this um, brand new, never really experienced it, learning tons myself here. Um, and I can see why so many people do talk about it and just wonder like, really, can it? I don't know. And hopefully I've asked all the right questions and I'm sure there's going to be other questions that people are, are wanting to ask you. But um, if anyone wants to follow you or find out more about the product, is there any way that or links that you would recommend that they follow you or get in contact with you? Yeah, well, well, I, I like what you're doing, Gary, and and we've I've put together a program. So if somebody goes to myvitalc.com/slash/biohackerslab, you'll probably put that in the show notes, right? Um, you'll get you'll get credit for it. So anybody out there who likes what you're doing uh, can kind of. Co co donate to the cause. Are you on pa Patreon also? No, I'm not. No. No. Okay. So, so the, here's a, a great way to donate to the ta to the cause and kind of keep you uh, enthused about what you're doing. Um, so that's myvitalc.com/slash/biohackerslab, and then also you can use a coupon code biohackerslab. So really the same coupon code, um, and that'll get you fifteen dollars off. It, when you go to that link, you can just scroll down the page. All of our products are, you can buy them in single bottles. We offer a 20 to 25% discount. If you go on subs subscription, you can um, cancel that subscription at any time. So do that you know, with confidence and go ahead and save that money. Um, and like I said, we've got olive oil. I definitely recommend the olive oil if you're interested in doing that. Um, and then uh, you know, we do have MCT. I put that in my coffee in the morning. Uh, avocado, a number of people just like avocado better. We also have a dog and cat version um, if you're interested in, in, you know, potentially your pets. I mean, if the rats live longer, the dog and cat are probably closer and, and more likely to live longer. Yeah. And that's actually a topic we, we didn't get to in this conversation was all about, I, I saw some, so many pet owners and their testimonials around this product too, which I'm guessing maybe that's what people will try to do is first give it to the pets and see if the pet responds before they take it themselves. <laughs> so what's interesting about giving it to, to the pets, and, 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 and I've got a distributor here uh, in Houston, our largest distributor. She gave it to her pet first um, and then noticed the difference in the pet. Now, what's interesting about that is there's no placebo effect, effect in the pet, right? The pet's not tricking itself to go, oh, I'm now supposed to be acting this way because I'm taking this product. So the, the, the difference in her pet was so strong that she started taking it. And now she's our, our, our largest distributor in Houston. Mm, interesting. Well, Chris, um, I just want to say thank you so much for your honesty. Um, I, really, I really do enjoy interviews where people just say it as it is. Um, and you took the product as it is live <laughs> on, on here for anyone watching on the YouTube channel too. So, you know, talk about trusting in your products when you actually just show someone, look, I'll just take it, uh, you know, don't yeah. worry. So, um, I th I th again, thank you for that honesty. And I really did uh, in enjoy our talk today. Yeah, same here, Gary. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I, I, of course, I want to get you got an aura ring. So that and that you're, you know, it, it we're gracious to have me on the podcast. I'd love to get you a couple bottles. And then maybe we can schedule reschedule a time to come back and talk about your experience. And, and there's probably little bits and pieces that we missed here that, uh, that, that might come up. And, you know, if it makes sense, let's, let's see if we can make that happen. Sounds like a plan. All right. Thank you, Gary.